नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन एन आइडिया व्हिच इज नॉट न्यू टू इंडिया बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम 1951 टू 52 इनफैक्ट टिल अबाउट 1967 वी डिड हैव साइमल्टेनियस लोकसभा एंड असेंबली इलेक्शंस बट व्हिच हैज बिकम अ सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ डिबेट ओनली इन रीसेंट इयर्स uh prime minister modi has often spoken about the need to hold simultaneous elections in the country as continuous polls in some or the other part of the country hampers development that's been asserted by the prime minister several times there have been substantial discussions in the country with numerous views on the subject as well but no substantive move owing to several impediments constitutional legal and of course political hurdles as well so why are we discussing the subject today well chief election commissioner sushil chandra recently said that the election commission is fully prepared and is capable of conducting simultaneous elections in fact he asserted that since independence for several years simultaneous elections were held it's only after 1967 that some assemblies were dissolved on some occasions the lok sabha that disturbed this schedule so the question now is when the idea is not new what is causing a challenge towards implementation of one nation one election we'll discuss this and much more on the show today with three distinguished panelists joining me on the program so let me first introduce them to you i'm joined virtually by uh, mr kts tulsi member of parliament rajya sabha of the congress party mr prakash javadekar member of parliament rajya sabha of the bjp and mr om prakash rawat former election commissioner of india thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program today uh, mr rawat let me begin the program today with you uh, since you know the chief election commissioner has now i uh, expressed confidence that the election commission is capable of holding simultaneous elections in india help us and our viewers understand this idea is not new to the country as i uh, said in my introduction remark 1951 52 till about 1967 we did have simultaneous elections in the country the schedule was only broken post 1967 but in the current context how feasible is this idea can we put this to practice uh thank you ms tina uh first of all let me wish uh, mr tulsi and mr javadekar uh very good evening uh this idea was forwarded to election commission in 2015 and uh, election commission suggestions were sought by the government and at that time election commission had advised the government that it has been feasible four times it was conducted and it will be feasible even now subject to the condition that certain amendments to the representation of people act and to the constitution especially article 383 85 172 174 and 356 yes are uh, made and some logistic arrangements should be permitted or uh, financed by the government for buying more evms more bb pets because simultaneous election will require a larger number of evm and bb pets similarly larger number of central paramilitary forces if these are met then election commission will be in a position to deliver simultaneous election any point of time and on that advice further uh, deliberations were made niti aayog prepared a paper uh, law commission also uh, uh, sort of discussed about this and submitted a report they gave certain options as to how to reach that milestone of simultaneous election by having midway uh, some elections with parliament and some elections separately all those things were said but there were uh, issues regarding political uh, sort of consensus which is very important for this kind of uh, important uh, change in the uh, electoral arena uh, for this certain efforts will be needed that all parties are on board they have full faith and confidence in the system and uh, they agree to it absolutely let uh, me take that point that to mr javadekar uh, mr javadekar consensus is of course the most uh, vital thing when we talk about uh, implementing one nation one election the prime minister has often spoken about it what efforts has the bjp made towards uh, building a consensus getting all parties on board getting in their views and addressing their concerns as well see it is very clear that our prime minister narendra modi has a vision to have once again simultaneous elections which we had seen in 52 57 62 
and 67. After that, what we have seen is many assemblies and in 80s, even the parliament were dissolved and midterm elections had to be called and therefore the whole timetable has gone average. So our vision is very clear, but we don't think it is only BJP's vision. It is not about cost. It is about governance and main issue is development activities. Because, because of uh, every, time, every year we have five or six state elections. So development work hampers and more importantly, all parties become election machines. Because every year you have to face five or six new different states. So main parties, other than regional parties, become election machines and many considerations because you become election. So that has to be avoided. And my faith is that one day collective wisdom will prevail. If there is a will, there is a way. We are discussing this not only openly as Prime Minister is putting up, but in various all-party all meetings also, this topic has been discussed and we are discussing on one-to-one -one basis with parties also. Because I think this is the mess and I can say there are many practical solutions to the problem. Nobody will be deprived of their term and nobody gets extended benefit. Okay, let, that me, come, solution let also me come back to you for possible. the solutions. The, uh, but initially, let, let me, I'm saying this. Okay, okay, I'll come back to you to understand what possible solutions we could look at if uh, we want to implement this idea. But uh, let me uh, bring in Mr. Tulsi into the discussion now to understand, obviously, there are efforts to build consensus, Dr. Tulsi, but there are several challenges. So especially when we talk about the constitutional impediments, if you could break down for us and our viewers, what are the main hurdles that one has to look at when we talk about one nation, one election? Well, uh, to put it bluntly, I believe that it is impossible under the present constitution to have presidential system of government or a fixed tenure for the, for the president or whoever is the chief executive. It is just not possible because the basic structure of the constitution cannot be amended by the parliament. That's the law that has been laid down by the Supreme Court by 11 judges, and therefore there is no room for any doubt that uh, you cannot convert parliament to democracy into a presidential form of government. Um, uh, I would say that on the last 70 years, the greatest achievement of India is that it has been able to preserve its democracy. And democracy, as compared to parliamentary democracy, the presidential form of democracy is restricted because the, the entire power rests in one person. Whereas in parliamentary democracy, there are 700 or 800 people who run the country and uh, are able to have participative uh, uh, participation in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the manner in which the parliament functions. So I believe that uh, uh, Parliamentary system's uh, greatest uh, uh, point is that the government in power is accountable to the lower house. And the day it loses majority support, it has to resign. So, Mr. Jai, I'll come to you, Mr. Jabrik. The entire uh, power is with, the, with one person. Howsoever controversial may be the matter, unless uh, what we have seen is that in this country, in the world, out of there are out of 155 countries, 61 have become dictatorships, and 94 are democracies. Democracy is the greatest gift to the people that that after independence was given to them. It is under this constitution that overnight everybody rich or poor, 
literate or illiterate, they got the right to vote. A universal franchise was, was the greatest. Uh, the Indian constitution is one of the best in the world. Constitution is not something which you can play with. We already are, in, are bringing about too many amendments to the constitution. Constitution is a sacred book by which the successive governments have to abide and follow and govern. I, I, would, I really think, feel that uh, besides presidential form of government will undermine federal structure of the country. It yes. is not the proposal to convert parliamentary democracy into presidential democracy. No way. Okay, so Mr. Javadikar, if I can, if I can interrupt, back, sir, you for the benefit of our government. viewers, if I can understand from you, what <clears throat> Mr. Tulsi says is significant because he highlights the challenges in a parliamentary form of democracy to implement the, this idea that we're talking about. But given no. the fact that you are talking about some, uh, some uh, changes that can be brought about within the existing parliamentary framework. So if I could ask you to take us through how we actually plan to bring in these changes in our existing framework, sir, Mr. Javadikar. Uh, it is very clear. First, after listening to Tunsi, let me again repeat that it is not change of parliamentary democracy into presidential democracy. It is not giving fixed tenure to the government. If government loses their confidence of the lower house, it will be thrown out. But what will be done is that at the same time, the mover of the no confidence motion will also say that we are moving no confidence against the government and we are bringing team A uh, as alternative. So they have to give that we put our confidence in this team, A and B, if it is there. Okay. So we are not giving fixed tenure to the government. It will have to be the confidence of the lower house. Nothing changes. What changes is that how to adjust because see why it was in Tulsi ji was in 52, 57, 62, 67 was not that demo was that presidential democracy. I think what we uh, what we are talking about is there is need to synchronize elections, general elections, assembly elections. We did it from 1951-52 to 1967. We just have to replicate it. And there are certain challenges that we are talking about. Now, going forth, if we want to synchronize, of course, there will be some assemblies whose, extend, whose terms will have to be extended, some of them whose terms will have to be curtailed. And that in itself is a massive challenge. Mr. Rawat. No, there is another yeah. way also. Uh, Even for I'll that issue, Election Commission had in, incorporated its suggestions as to how it can be achieved initially. Mm -hmm. And also, during uh, simultaneous election phase also, there may be instances when some assembly gets dissolved uh, premature or even parliament may have some problems. Even for that eventuality, Election Commission had incorporated suggestions. Like Mr. Jawlekar is saying, Election Commission had suggested that for no confidence, instead of simple no confidence, we should be talking of constructive no confidence or a confidence motion. So all those suggestions were given by election commission for making changes in the law and in the framework so that it becomes feasible. And it is not the change or change the form of government. It is only synchronizing the elections and meeting all the eventual issues arising on it. Absolutely. But uh, Mr. Tulsi, how to synchronize? Because for parties, elections these days, we know it is an, you know, a, a very, very difficult procedures. So parties that win with a thumping majority, will they be agreeing to curtail their terms if we are talking about synchronizing? I am very clear on this because now in 24, we will have in May parliament elections. Before that six months, there are elections to the State Assembly of Rajasthan, then uh, this uh, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, and now Telangana also. So these four states. And after the Lok Sabha poll, there will be state elections in Maharashtra, uh, then Maharashtra and uh, Haryana. So these six states and Orissa and Andhra, 
already has their assembly election along with Lok Sabha election. So there will be eight states going to poll, eight assemblies going to poll with very small adjustment of six months, and it will be part A of the simultaneous election. Uh, Mr. Tulsi, elections are a costly affair even for political parties. So when we have simultaneous elections, it is also going to reduce the burden on political parties and obviously the administrative machinery is going to be uh, better utilized. Why is this idea, uh, uh, why are parties averse to this uh, idea? I mean, what are the concerns that political parties have due to which there is no consensus so far? Well. I, I can only say that regional parties will be at a disadvantage. They will never agree to this. That is one, one reality, harsh reality. And the second is that it diminishes accountability. Okay. The accountability on day-to-day -day basis, accountability of minute-to-minute -minute basis. The, the sacred book of the constitution should not be desecrated. I feel that all those countries which have slipped into dictatorships were able to do it much more easily where parliamentary democracy did not exist. Let us learn something from the world experience. If we want to remain democratic and if we want to have the best of democracies in the, in the world, we must retain parliamentary system it should be this, it should, it should be true accountability, not feigned accountability. So therefore, I believe that we must not, we, we cannot interfere or alter parliamentary democracy in any form because that is the basic structure of the constitution. Okay, Mr. Javadikar, do you want to respond to it? Sir, Regional Tunchi parties ji. will be at a disadvantage. There is concern that the ruling party will be at an advantage. That is no. one concern that uh, opposition parties, that smaller parties have highlighted. Yes. How, how would and you like it to will respond? undermine federal structure. Okay, okay. Mr. Javadikar, how would, you, how would you respond um, to it that it undermines I, the federal structure of our country? Yeah, KTS Tulsi is a very senior constitutional lawyer. I have respect for him. And I want to ask, whether Nehruji was dictator in 52, in 57, in 62 and 67, why the elections were held simultaneously under Because Nehru? there was no, because they, they, all the states and the center, they ran their term of five, five years. After that, it is a dissolution of the house prematurely, which will then result in all the others, uh, uh, Term being curtailed or to have it synchronized. No, not curtailed. That's what I'm telling. So I, I gave you a concrete proposal of election 24. Just six months before that election, there are four state assembly elections. And immediately after, along with it, it will be two assembly what elections. What will happen if a state government falls? A state government falls after one year. Their four year tenure will be gone. They no, not gone. Not yes, gone. What, what is the solution no, to it? Gone. What is the that solution is the to it, Mr. Javadikar? If, if a house is, is dissolved, if the Lok Sabha is dissolved, and because the government, of course, is accountable, no, no, what happens because then? There will, be, there will be provision that when you move no confidence motion, you have to also simultaneously move confidence motion. So both motions will be before the house. Either they will pass or they will not pass. That's a majority. I, be, I believe that it is impossible for the parliament to tinker with the question of parliamentary democracy as delineated. Parliamentary the democracy is not being tempered. Okay, okay, Mr. Rabat. Us, let, if, if we are able to then scrap basic structure, again, there will be a problem with the Supreme Court. We are not tinkering, not a change, iota of change or a word change we are restoring the democracy of Pandit Nehru to have simultaneous elections. Pandit in Nehru 52, was not against the constitution. Pandit Nehru was not above the constitution. Whatever he but may that have is done, what we it's have a different so matter. Nobody will say about constitution. 
Okay, the I think the same constitution, I, I the same constitution, the constitutional the same impediments are, the are several that the government were, will have to work uh, on, uh, Mr. Javadekar, to build a consensus. But let me at the moment bring in uh, Mr. Rawat as well. We have spoken yeah. about the kind of uh, constitutional hurdles that will, uh, if, if when we talk about this idea that that we are facing. But logistically, Mr. Rawat, if I try and understand, if there are simultaneous elections, and of course, if we compare it to 51-52 to now, the situation has changed. Logistically, uh, what are the hurdles that the election commission might face in terms of EVMs, in terms of e VV pads, extra security as well, when elections are held at one go? How much preparation will be required and logistically, how prepared is the election commission? Uh, actually, the time when I left election commission in December 2018, uh, we needed uh, nearly two years to complete the manufacture of additional EVMs and VV pads because these are manufactured only in Bharat Electronics and uh, ECIL. Uh, and uh, about uh, 600 crores of rupees for purchasing these uh, EVMs and VV pads. Around uh, one third of the CPMFs as of now, additional would be required. And for uh, polling arrangements, we will need certain changes to deploy people from across the state because some states uh, fall short of polling personnel. So even that will be required. Certainly. So Beyond it, that, we didn't need anything to make the simultaneous elections feasible. It will be a mammoth exercise. Amendments were important because once amendments are there, means a political consensus has evolved. That is very important. Absolutely. Consensus is something that, that is awaited on this idea. Uh, Mr. Javarikar, more clarity needed on, you know, what happens even when the constitution is amended. If the lower house get, gets dissolved and the governments fall, fresh elections are held, the cycle will once again break. So what is the solution to it? This is a valid concern. I think more clarity will be needed in order to obtain consensus, sir. No, I think uh, we are very clear on this issue. Uh, Advani ji uh, gave the proposal that while you are moving no confidence motion, simultaneously you will bring confidence motion in some other team and both will be discussed. Either they will pass or they will not pass. But that is how government will continue for the term, remaining term in that uh, uh, this. So this is how actually I understand why KTS will see things that this proposal changes the system, nothing. We are not doing 76. It diminishes accountability. In, in during emergency, the term of Lok Sabha was extended for by one year. We are not doing this. What we are proposing is to have the system which was there till 67. It is not possible for a system to work like that. Okay, but um, Mr. Tulsi, the Law Commission recommends that if you want to go for one nation, one election, certain changes will, requ will be required only in terms of, you know, amending People's Representation <coughs> Act of 1951, some amendments in uh, procedures. But, I mean, largely the structure remains the same. So we still remain a parliamentary form of democracy. Why do you think it's not uh, practical to put this idea into practice in the current uh, existing framework? We are talking about constitution and parliamentary democracy. Any change in the system as envisaged by the Supreme Court will be altering the basic structure. The Supreme Court, according to me, my understanding, will mm -hmm. not permit this sort of adventurism. And that also with the, with the basic, the, the rock bay of the constitution, parliamentary democracy. I don't think that that is possible. I don't think that is desirable. And I think that we, we, we need to be able to work the system within the constitution without uh, 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 altering it in any form or manner. You know, th only those countries have, have been able to preserve democracy, which have made minimum number of amendments to the constitution. We already have made over a hundred amendments. We, we, we must not be so prolific. Parliament 
is for accountability, not for bringing about legislations every other day. Mr. Javadekar, I'll come to you for, uh, for a final comment uh, and I'll add uh, a question also related to that. But uh, Mr. Rawat, meanwhile, was smiling when Mr. Tulsi was making his point. Why do you think, uh, Mr. Rawat, that this idea, I mean, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Tulsi says, that it is not practically possible to have so many amendments and, uh, you know, uh, fiddle with the basic structure of our constitution? Uh, I respect his opinion that the basic structure has to be preserved, but uh, these changes do not impinge on the basis structure at all, and constitution cannot afford to remain a static document. World is changing very fast, technology is evolving, and therefore meeting social needs, meeting developmental needs will require changes in constitution every time, and making more amendments doesn't mean that we are tinkering with the constitution. We are a pragmatic society, developing society, and we want to deliver to our people's welfare. And therefore, whatever uh -huh. changes are needed, you we are going to make those changes. Okay, okay, Mr. Javadekar, one last comment from you. Different perspectives, obviously, different concerns. And uh, obviously, even though you give clarity, consensus is very, very far away. And without consensus, this objective can't be achieved. What is the way ahead? How will you strategize to at least have the consensus ahead, politically? The way ahead is to pursue persuade and continuously discuss this idea because, as I said, it will be the result of collective wisdom. And I'm always hopeful that collective wisdom will ultimately prevail. And when there is a way, uh, when there is a will, common will, then there will be easy way out. And we are not changing the system. We are not asking for uh, dismissing the governments, what we can do is in two steps, uh, in two, uh, yeah, there will be elections. And that only basically, it's a matter of one time for one year. There was other proposal also that in 20, now after 24, whatever election happens, it will be, it will happen for say, uh, the election which happens in 15, will happen for uh, four years. So nobody can dispute. And then from 29, everything is uh, simultaneous. And I believe in Pandit Nehru and the system we operated, that was democracy. It was not emergency of Indira Gandhi, where the parliament basic structure of constitution was demolished completely. And this was, this is not the uh, time of, uh, we are discussing that kind of demolition of the basic structure. We are asking that what was the system from 52 to 67, the same we can bring back with common will. Absolutely. So even though, well, you know, I, it, I want it, to say private... that constitution, yeah, yes, Mr. Tulsi, go ahead. constitution deserves to be protected. It is not, constitution is not for one government or one person. Constitution is for centuries to guide the nations into adversity as well as progressive, uh, uh, as well as growth. But uh, to say that uh, you, you can make changes to the form of parliamentary democracy. No, not form Okay, of, okay. So I think, I think, I think change to form. there that are several the differing proposal, opinions uh, still, uh, Mr. Javrekar, and I think uh, the idea yeah. seems good. The Prime Minister has been talking about it, but consensus is something that you'll have to really work upon in the times to come to actually make this idea into a reality, bring this idea back, I should rather say. Uh, with that, I'll, I think I'll have to wrap up the discussion. Uh, time is running out. Thank you to all of you for joining us on the program, sharing your different perspective with us and our viewers as well on this program. All right, so that's it from us on this edition of Perspective today. Thanks very much to all our viewers as well for their time. See you again next time.